let's say I have a function from r plus to r denoted by y square to x. Remember, I have given real num positive numbers because x has to be positive. So, is this, is this a function? You see that this y is dependent on x, right? Whatever value, positive value of x you put, you will get a y. So, there is a rule which defines x, y and x, but the values of y you will get are not unique. You will get two values of y. So, the first condition that there has to be a single image of each element is false because let's say I put x equals to 1, I'll get the value of y or the value of y which is image in this case as plus minus 1. So, this is not a function. Let's the first question. Similarly, if I give you another expression, the Okay, I hope you understand this. What I mean is that the, let's say this is the set x, this is the set y. The set x has lies, has elements between minus 2 to 2, set y has all real numbers. So, this is how the relation or the rule is defined. This is the rule. So, is this a function? Here again, I'll get y is 4 minus x square. For a single value of x, I'll get two values of y. So, this is not a function. Okay. Now, graf graphically, we can see whether a function or, or a function is there or not, or a rule is a function or not, by plotting the graph. Let's say I have a graph of the equation like this. I have another graph like this. Okay. Now, you know, in a graph, this is the dependent variable. This is the this is the independent variable, this is the dependent variable. So, x is this in this case is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. And uh, if I know, know the rule which defines y in terms of x, I can draw the function. I can draw the graph, sorry. Now, let's say I have drawn two graphs using some rule. The first graph is like this, the second graph is like this. Now, I need to identify which of these two are functions. Now, for a function, for each value of x, I should get a single value of y. So, in this case, you see for this value of x, I have a single value of y. For this value of x, I have another single value of y. Or, in this case, again, I have a single value of y. So, this is a function. But here, you see, for a given value of x, I have two values of y. This and this. Or, you, rather, you can say you have three values of y. So, this is not a function. To quickly find whether it is a function or not, just draw a straight line parallel to the y-axis. If, if if it intersects the graph at more than one point, then it's not a function. You see here it intersects at three points, here it intersects at three points. So, this is not a function, right? But here it intersects at a single point, so this is a function. Now, we have talked a lot about what a function is. Now, let's understand, we have talked that these are the elements in the set x, these are the elements in the set y and these are rather the images of set, the set Y has images of set X. So, going, probably defining that, we have something called domain and range of a function and also something like codomain. Okay. So, let's understand what a domain is. Domain is nothing but the set X itself. Codomain is nothing but the set Y itself and the elements which are the images of, of the elements of set X are in the range. So, codomain consists of all the elements of set Y but range consists of only those elements of set Y which are images. Okay, so let's say I have two sets x and y. Let's say I have two uh, elements in this case. I have some three, four elements. Let's say this one rule is like this. So, the domain is a and b. The range is 1 and 2 and the core domain is 1, 2, 3, 4. It has taken into account all the elements of set y. It has taken into account all the elements of set x. 
and these are the only the images of the elements of set x and this is known as the range okay now in functions you will generally be asked questions like find the domain of this function find the range of this function what we mean is find the elements which are there in set x we find the elements which are the images of set x so before we move on to questions like finding the domain and range of functions we need to have a look at few standard functions now few standard functions are for example the absolute value functions this is not denoted by mod x this is equal to x if f is greater than 0 it is this equal to minus x if x is less than 0 remember i can put the equality sign in any one place this is how absolute value function is defined now as you can see that the absolute value function is always positive because if it's x, if x is greater than 0, then x is itself positive. And if it's minus x, then minus of a negative quantity is a positive quantity. This is a positive quantity. Now, I won't discuss much on absolute value functions because I have already discussed this when we were studying inequalities. So, you, if you want to... If you haven't studied this part, absolute value function, you can have a look at our inner qualities lecture. You'll get to know more about absolute value function. Then we have the logarithmic function, which also we have discussed in when we were studying inequalities. The next standard function, which we need to know is the greatest integer function. So let's understand what greatest integer function is. Greatest integer function is denoted by like this and it is also called as box x. If I have a variable x, then the function is known as box of x. Okay. So let's understand what integer, uh, integer greatest integer function is. Suppose I have a real number. Let's say I have any real number. Okay. Let's say the real number could be 2.5, 2.7, 3.1, -3.1, .1, anything. Okay, now we know that if I have a real number, that then that real number will lie between two integers. Let's say I have two point five, then two point five lies between two and three. Let's say I have two, then two also lies between two and three. It is equal to two. So any real number lies between two integers. Okay, now the greatest integer function is nothing but the uh, integer it's basically an integer such that x is larger than it than that integer it is the greatest value of an integer for which x is greater than for example i have 2.5 let's say i have taken 2.5 then the greatest value of the integer for which x is greater than that integer is 2 so box of 2.5 is 2 it is the greatest value of the integer for which the variable is greater than that integer okay for example if we take 3.1 box of that is 3 if i take minus 4.1 then minus 4.1 what is the greatest value of integer of which minus 4.1 is greater than that is minus 5 so this is box of so from this we can conclude that box x is what it's always greater than that integer or equal to that integer but it's less than this right this equality sign holds when x is itself integer so let's say i have two when i take a box of that i get two again okay now 
when i take box of x i get only the integer part this is the integral part this is the integral part in case of negative numbers it's minus 5 because minus 4.1 is greater than minus 5 but it's less than minus 4 so the greatest value of the integer of for which minus 4 1 is greater than that integer is minus 5 okay similarly we have something known as the fractional part of an integer The fractional part of an integer is noted by this. Okay. This is the fractional part of an integer. Let's say I have an integer 2.5. The fractional part of this will be what? 0.5. Let's say I have an integer minus 3.2. X in this case is minus 3.2. Box of in this case is minus 4. So minus minus 4 is 4. So integral part or fractional part is 0.8. right so i can say using these two conditions like i can say that any integer x is nothing but what or any real number is this what i have done is i have taken the integral part to this side so x is can be denoted as like this now now let's see box x this is an integer we have seen that this is always less than or equal to x the real number and this has to be greater than x minus 1 let's say i have 2.5 then this is 2 and this is 1.5 so this is greater than x minus 1 and this is greater than x okay now let's take negation of this remember when i take negation the limits get interchange so i'll have minus x in this case then minus of box x less than 1 minus x okay now let's take this add x on all the three parts then this will get as 0 this will get as x minus box x and this is 1 what is this x minus box x is what fractional part of x so the fractional part of x we see lies between 0 and 1.